System Configuration Part 3. In this video, we will go over the commissioning process and how to add the MDTs and their associated meters. Now that the DCAP has been installed and configured in Part 2, we need to power up the MDTs and repeaters so that they can communicate with the DCAP. To turn on a repeater, simply plug in the included 5 volt AC adapter into an outlet and then into the repeater. Note that the LEDs will at first light up, but will go off after a minute. Here we are showing two different types of MDTs, both of which turn on the same way. Press and hold the button until the LED starts to flash. It will stay solid for 10 seconds when it has connected successfully to the DCAP. We will use the CIT to associate the devices with the location and meter information. First, connect to the DCAP if you hadn't already done so. Refer to part 2 of this video. The active devices will show in the network tree side panel as uncommissioned. To configure a device so it is attached to the DCAP, first click on the Node View tab. Next, right click on the radio ID of the device and click Add this uncommissioned device. You can also simply drag its icon onto an empty line in the grid view. As soon as the device is added to the site, its icon will turn green in the network tree. Once an MDT or a repeater is commissioned, you can then enter their location information in the grid view, such as address, building, apartment, zip code, or location notes. In order to associate meter information with an MDT, click on the Sensor View tab. Here, you can associate meter information such as units, meter type, meter style, and meter notes with an MDT. Note that in the Sensor View tab, the CIT displays only MDTs of the same type at a time. If your network includes different types of MDTs, make sure to use the Sensor Type drop-down list to display and configure all the MDTs present in your network. You can either edit one cell at a time by choosing the single cell edit mode and clicking on the cell you wish to edit. Or, to edit multiple cells, select multi-cell edit mode, select the multiple cells you wish to edit by dragging the mouse over them, and then edit the cells in the bottom section to your desired values and click the Update Selected Cells button. If you do not want to enter meter location and information manually, it is also possible to enter it by importing a CSV file. You will first need to create a CSV file including all the desired information. Using your internet browser, navigate to the Tahama Wireless website. Navigate to the submetering page, then to the documents page. Scroll down and click on AN-111A Commissioning CSV Import Template. This will open a template that you can easily fill in with your desired information. Once done, save the file and make sure to close it. Launch the CIT again and connect to the DCAP you wish to commission. Under the CIT menu, choose Import Meter Configuration Data, CSV Data, and select the CSV file you just created. Enter the row number at which your data begins. Do not include header row or other textual information. If your file contains a header row with names that match our field names, the column will automatically be matched. Otherwise, simply match the column with the proper heading. When done, click the Import button. If your CSV file contains the radio ID, corresponding MDTs will be commissioned. Otherwise, first navigate to the Configuration Data, Node View, Location tab and match each associated apartment or meter by dragging its icon from the network tree to the proper line. Your site is now fully commissioned. Remember to click on the pen icon to save the configuration to the DCAP. Please proceed to part 4 of this video to learn how to set up daily reports and alerts for your system. If you have any further questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us at the information here.